I'm Tony Marino, CEO of Tenaz Energy. Thank you for joining us for our Q1 2024 update. Please note on slide two, our advisory on forward-looking statements. So turning to slide four, our operating and financial highlights, production volumes were approximately 2,900 BOED in the first quarter. Uh, that's down modestly from Q4 23. The decline driven by natural declines in production in our Canadian older wells and uh, the newer wells that we drilled in the second half of last year in Canada coming off their initial higher rates. Netherlands production was also down modestly, that driven by a combination of planned and unplanned downtime. We registered FFO, funds flow from operations, of $7 million in the first quarter. Uh, after deducting CapEx of $3.8 million, uh, we had $3.2 million of free cash flow. That FFO number, uh, again, down from what we recorded in Q4, we had the aforementioned uh, lower production level. Uh, we had a little bit lower benchmark prices. Uh, that was significantly offset by the hedging that we had done for TTF gas uh, in the Netherlands. And the net of those factors, uh, again, the lower FFO. We ended Q124 with positive adjusted working capital or negative net debt of approximately $49 million. That's about uh, the same level that we had at the end of the year. And that includes the impact of our buyback program. The NCIB uh, retired another 200,000 shares approximately at an average cost of $3.67 per share in Q124. Uh, we feel that that's been a very successful program having retired a total now of 2 million shares and an average cost of $2.77 since we began the NCIB program. And as I'll cover more in detail in just a, a minute, we executed a definitive agreement to acquire a gas processing plant and the surrounding uh, oil and gas leasehold from a private company. Uh, the net cost to us uh, $2.8 million based on an effective date of uh, January 1, 24. So turning to the uh, gas plant acquisition at uh, Leduc Wood Bend, covered on slide six of the PowerPoint. First, I'll talk about the deal terms. Um, again, uh, uh, after uh, uh, assigning one eighth of the purchase to our uh, uh, non-operating partner in the Leduc Wood Bend field, uh, we acquired seven eighths, 87 and a half percent of this surrounding leasehold, and uh, for Tenaz, 100 percent of the gas plant, uh, known as the Wadalit gas plant. Uh, net cost uh, estimated at closing of $2.8 million to us for these assets based on the effective date of January 1, 24. If you look on the map on the right side of the slide, you can see our Leduc Woodbend field with our Rex member leasehold uh, shaded in gray. We have our Rex horizontal wells shown in blue, and then the acquired assets uh, in the orange color. With a, the uh, gas plant uh, just to the uh, southwest of our field, uh, roughly uh, uh, two and a half miles away from uh, our southernmost wells, a, uh, a variety of uh, pipelines that uh, go with this to connect the leasehold wells to the plant and our existing uh, Leduc Woodbend Rex wells to the plant, and then a couple of other uh, smaller batteries, uh, which we label here as uh, active batteries uh, in, the, uh, in the leasehold position. Uh, the uh, transaction is subject to approval by the Alberta Energy Regulator. We expect to get that approval in Q224. Uh, the purpose of the acquisition uh, is to control our uh, processing destiny at uh, Leduc Woodbend. All of our produced gas from Leduc Woodbend that we're solution gas that we're making while we ramp up oil production in that field goes through this plant. Uh, we do pay a fee stream on the plant that we will now be uh, paying to ourselves and we'll have, uh, so there's a profit stream associated with it already. Uh, and uh, we will have the opportunity now, the control of the plant, to cut costs there, to uh, increase the uptime, which we have a strong incentive to maintain it at the highest uptime possible because uh, 
uh, when the gas plant is down, uh, so is our oil production. So there's a whole host of advantages just in our proprietary gas production that go with this plant. Uh, in addition, the plant does take in uh, some third-party volumes, and I'll run through that in just a second when we talk about the capacity uh, in the plant. And that's a part of the business that uh, we believe can be quite profitable as well, and uh, we would seek to expand over time. There are a variety of producers uh, in the area with gas production that uh, we think would like to send it through the plant. Some of them with shut-in wells uh, because they don't have adequate uh, processing capacity. So in the uh, bottom half of the slide, I want to focus in a little bit more on the, uh, the capabilities and the characteristics and the metrics of this uh, uh, set of assets. Uh, so the plant uh, currently has a capacity of about 7.5 million cubic feet a day. About three quarters of that gas plant capacity, uh, today's capacity, is currently being used with the flows through the plant. And of that three quarters of 7.5 million, uh, about 75% of what is flowing through is our proprietary gas uh, from Leduc Woodband. The plant does have, we think, good capability to be expanded, and you can think of this in a couple of different ways. First of all, uh, there is equipment uh, at the plant, idle compression, probably require a few other modifications to the uh, uh, process flow there. Uh, but with that idle equipment, we think we can, uh, if we put it back in service at uh, fairly minimal cost, we can get the capacity of the plant up to about 12 million cubic feet a day. Uh, now, today we don't uh, need that capacity, but we would be using uh, more of it as we expand the oil production at Leduc Woodband with its uh, associated uh, uh, solution gas. And furthermore, uh, we do have the concept of bringing in additional third-party volumes, some of which are already shut in the area, some of which would allow more development by uh, third-party operators if they had a place to send the gas and, and uh, sending that additional gas through Leduc Woodband for a, a profitable fee. Uh, ultimately, uh, the licensing of the plant, which is pretty important, uh, allows it to have a capacity of 20 million cubic feet a day, and uh, it is licensed for sour service, uh, we think, which is quite an advantage considering that the uh, plant is in the area of Leduc Reef and there's a, a lot of sour production in the area. Our production from uh, the Rex Formation is all sweet production, no H2S in it, but uh, a number of the other third-party producers in the area uh, do have sour gas, and uh, it's uh, certainly an advantage uh, in this area to be able to uh, process that. Um, as the plant stands today without expansion, uh, a third-party report by McDaniel using our uh, reserve report uh, showing the growth and the future growth in our Leduc uh, Woodband Rex production shows a value for the plant and the associated leasehold of about $9 million discounted to 10% on an ATAX basis. Um, so that includes the uh, quite minimal production from the associated lands uh, which exist today and the uh, uh, plant with our current uh, forecast under the reserve report of uh, uh, Leduc Woodband associated gas coming with the uh, oil product that we're developing there. Uh, that number uh, does not include any uh, additional third-party volumes and it doesn't include the value uh, in the upstream, in the uh, leasehold acquired of any further uh, development, any further drilling on those new yellow lands uh, that are shown on the map. Uh, we do think that there are some interesting possibilities in the leasehold. Uh, there are several different ideas. We have Rex uh, potentially uh, a glauconit uh, glauconitic on a small pool, but particularly regar regarding the uh, Ellerslie formation. Now, this is part of the Manville Group. Uh, that includes the Rex, Glock, uh, uh, Lloyd, the other horizons that we are producing from and are prospective in the, uh, for us in the area. Uh, Ellerslie is a good producer in the Manville in a variety of places in Alberta. There's actually a pretty big uh, original oil in place Ellerslie pool that is included in the acquired lands. Uh, it's at a fairly low recovery factor today, all on primary development. And we do think that there is a target for Horizontal drilling, it's a permeable zone. It would uh, use multilateral wells without hydraulic fracturing. Uh, that is not included in the value that we see today, but it is a possibility for us to add to our development slate uh, 
I don't really want to commit to a certain timing on that, uh, and it's going to require additional study uh, before we do any uh, uh, drilling uh, in the Ellerslie on these new lands. Uh, however, uh, I guess in the uh, uh, fastest uh, scenario, it, it could even involve uh, drilling an Ellerslie le uh, well in this year's program. So we'll keep you posted on that. But we think we got a great plant asset that uh, is valuable in and of itself. It's got some upsides to it, certainly in this area. And uh, we think that uh, we've got some potential value in the leasehold that uh, uh, comes along uh, with the gas plant. Next, let's uh, just briefly take a look at slide eight and uh, put Q124 in the context of the TANAS record uh, dating back to our recapitalization about two and a half years ago. So uh, comparing uh, TANAS today and for uh, 2024 to the time of the recap in uh, Q421, we find that production is up about 3x. FFO uh, actually is uh, as at uh, 2023 up about 8x from the time of the recapitalization. And even while that production and cash flow has been going up, uh, we've had a substantial improvement uh, in the balance sheet in our positive adjusted uh, working capital balance, uh, what we also refer to as negative net debt, uh, standing at about uh, roughly 49 million at Q124. Uh, again, up substantially uh, from the time of the recap. At the same time that production and cash flow have been going up, along with our uh, adjusted working capital position, we have reduced the share count by 7% through the NCIB. And let's take a look at our activity that we have planned for 2024 and uh, just uh, review our guidance. So during 2024, we're going to continue development at Leduc Woodbend. That development could also include some activity on the new leasehold as we evaluate the various opportunities that we have, uh, look at capital efficiencies, and uh, uh, decide which uh, new concepts we might want to bring in to allow even more inventory for future development. But we will uh, be planning to drill in Canada in the second half of the year. Uh, this budget plan that we have is designed to maintain investment flexibility. Uh, and continue to deliver free cash flow while we grow. We could go up or down uh, in the size of the program, depending on commodity prices and a variety of other factors, uh, including our alternative uh, investment opportunities. Uh, but that's what we have planned presently for activity. Netherlands capital investment on the existing uh, E&P hydrocarbon properties will continue. Uh, in our non-operated position that we have in uh, offshore Netherlands gas. Uh, we will also uh, continue with evaluation of the Netherlands CCS project, uh, where the operator of that project plans about $3 million uh, of capital investment that would be net to our account uh, as they advance through the front-end engineering design phase uh, en route to a uh, FID decision, uh, probably in the... Uh, first half of 2025. The production volumes uh, that we uh, will be producing are hedged uh, to a meaningful degree for uh, the gas product. Uh, we have one-fifth of our production hedge for TTF for Q2 and Q3 of this year at an equivalent Canadian price, uh, fixed price of $14.57 per MCF. Uh, in the winter 24-25, uh, uh, that would be Q4-24 and Q1-25, uh, we have hedged 40% of our TTF exposure at quite strong prices. A, uh, a swap price and a portion of it at about $14 Canadian per MCF and a collar uh, between a floor of $13.74 Canadian with a ceiling of $17.49 Canadian. Uh, all of these uh, reflecting the very strong market that we have for natural gas in Europe. Uh, we have hedged uh, also about a quarter of our winter ACO exposure, uh, so that would be uh, approximately Q4-24 and Q1-25 uh, at a price of $3.28 per MCF. Uh, a good price uh, 
you know, we feel by Canadian standards that hedge is a little bit in the black right now, uh, but you can see the big disparity uh, between the price for natural gas that we get in Canada for our associated gas from Leduc Woodbend as compared to the uh, gas production that we have offshore Netherlands. And of course, uh, some, something I'll, I'll touch on uh, in closing, we're continuing our M&A efforts uh, in our targeted regions of focus, uh, primarily Europe, but also Latin America and potentially MENA. Um, on the lower left, we show our production mix uh, for 2024, about 43% Canadian oil and liquids, about 38% uh, high value TTF gas in the Netherlands, and uh, the remaining 19%, the lower priced ACO uh, gas production. 2024 20, guidance remains unchanged, production of 2,700 to 2,900 BOED. Uh, we produced just below uh, the upper end of that guidance in, uh, in Q1 24. That was before any uh, drilling in Canada in 24. And uh, we maintain our current D&D uh, &D CapEx or uh, drilling and development CapEx uh, guidance of 23 to $25 million Canadian. Um, finally, on slide 11, I just want to reiterate our international strategy. Um, we have made this what we think is a uh, quite valuable but small acquisition of infrastructure and uh, leasehold in Canada. Uh, but uh, I, I want to be very clear that even though we try to add to the value of the uh, Canadian asset, well, we can. We've got a great asset here in Canada, and we'll uh, uh, make small deals around uh, that existing field to further uh, increase its value. Uh, but the main focus of the company remains making acquisitions in the international market. Uh, in the regions I mentioned, Europe, Latin America, MENA, uh, we go there because there is uh, for these larger assets that we're uh, talking about in the international arena, there's a lot less competition we feel than in Canada. They come off at uh, higher rates of return uh, that can be expressed as lower multiples on the initial acquisition, and we find a, a greater opportunity in those assets for operational improvements than you'd find, I think, on similarly sized assets in North America. And the combination of those two things, better value at entry, and a greater opportunity for international uh, for uh, operational improvement in the international assets gives you a higher uh, rate of return on invested capital uh, in this international M&A market compared to uh, North America. And as always, we'll be emphasizing our leadership in ESG practice, practices, and I encourage you to look at our sustainability reports that are on our website. Um, so with that, uh, I will close and uh, thank all of our listeners for your uh, interest in FNAS. Uh, uh, we will uh, look forward to speaking to you again when we release our Q2 results this summer. Thank you.